So we've been producing images using Stable Diffusion, and to be honest, the images we've been generated are not quite as good as the images other people online have been able to generate. And the reason for this is that we've been using the base Stable Diffusion model, so Stable Diffusion 1.5, whereas other people have been using heavily modified versions of Stable Diffusion. And just an analogy to get this point across, think about the model that we've been using up to now as a standard car, like the one you use for everyday tasks. And now think of the models that other people have been using as the same model, but just heavily modified so that it'll be able to perform much better. And in our use case, generate much better images. And so you may be wondering if these modified models are so great, where do we get them from? And so there are multiple places online where you can get these modified models from. But today I'm just going to show you one website where I usually get all my models from. Now the website we're going to be using today is a website called civitai.com. Now, once you're on this website, what you want to do is click on models over here and then filter by all time and filter by checkpoints only. So checkpoints just mean models in our case. Don't worry about all these other options. Just make sure that only checkpoints are clicked. And now looking at all these models, just by looking at the images alone, you'll be able to get a sense of what these models are capable of. So I can tell that Rev Animated is suitable for generating animated images, whereas stuff like Epic Realism will be able to produce high quality, realistic looking images. So in our example for today, I'm going to be using Rev Animated. So just click on Rev Animated. So once you're on this page, you'll be able to see some of the images that this model can produce. And if you scroll further down, you'll be able to see some of the images that the community themselves were actually able to produce using this model. Now, this should give you a further idea of what this model is capable of. Now, I want to bring your attention to another point, and that is the base model over here. And so remember how I was saying that the models people are using are just heavily modified versions of the models that we've been using. And so this is what I meant. So you can see that this model is based of SD 1.5, so the model that we've been using. And now by looking at the base model, we can get some information about how to use this model correctly. So for example, I know that 512 by 512 works well with Stable Diffusion 1.5. And I now know that this base model will also work well with 512 by 512 because it's based off Stable Diffusion 1.5. I also know that if I want to generate higher resolution images, that I should be using the 128 rule that I mentioned in a previous video. Now to download this model, all you need to do is click on the download button over here. And this will start the actual model download. Once that's done, head to where Stable Diffusion is installed on your PC, and then go on to Models, Stable Diffusion, and then paste in the downloaded file into this folder over here. Now back in Stable Diffusion, all you need to do is click on this refresh button over here, and then click on the drop down box, and you should be able to see the Rev Animated model available to you. So click on it and wait for the model to load. Now, once this model is loaded, what you want to do is use the prompts that you've been using with Stable Diffusion 1.5 and try them with the Rev Animator model just to see the difference in quality. So I'm going to try generate an image using the, one of the prompts. And so this is one image I was able to generate using the prompts. And I think personally, it looks a lot cleaner than when we were using Stable Diffusion 1.5. Now, just to further demonstrate my point, on screen, you should be able to see two images. They were both made using the same prompt but one was made with Stable Diffusion 1.5 and the other one with Rev Animated. And hopefully you should be able to see how Rev Animated is able to produce really high quality images when compared to Stable Diffusion 1.5. Now back on the Rev Animated page, let's say I see an image that I really like. So for example, let's say I really like this image. I can click on it and I'm able to see all the generation data that was used to make the image. Now I have two options here. One, I could just take the prompt, put it in the prompt box, the negative prompt in the negative prompt box and so on, and slowly copy all the generation data into the actual stable diffusion. Or I could just click on copy generation data here and then back on the stable diffusion, go into the prompt box and type in control V or right click paste. And then you should be able to click on this button over here and it will autofill the generation data so that you will be able to generate the image. Now, a piece of advice before you actually generate this image 
is just to turn up high risk fix. I will explain what it does in a future video, but for now, I suspect that if you try to generate this image right now, a couple of you will run into out of memory errors on your GPU. So just turn it off for now and then try generate your image. And so now that the image has been generated, you may be able to notice that it does not look exactly what the other image looked like. And some of you may be wondering why that is the case, considering we've used all the same generation data apart from the high res fix. And so you may be thinking that it was because we changed high res fix, but I guarantee that even if you did leave that on, you still come out with a different image. And the reason I could tell this is that the person is using additional files within his prompt that we have actually downloaded. And an easier way to spot if this person has used additional files that we don't have is by looking at the prompt and looking for words that don't look like they're actually part of an English dictionary. And so what I mean by this is that knight, helmet, red are all words that can be found in the dictionary. However, stuff like mechanical world or easy negative or bad hand before cannot easily be found in the dictionary as it's a combination of multiple words. Now, in the future, I will explain how to get these additional files onto your PC so that you can generate the image exactly how this person has generated it. But for now, just a quick tip that if you do see words that you don't understand or words that look like they don't belong in an English dictionary, you could just simply take them and delete them. Or if you don't mind, you can actually just leave those words in and see how they actually affect your image. But like I said, I will explain how to get these additional files on. And so this video was more about showing you the bare basics of using custom models, just so that as we go through the actual basics of stable diffusion, you still will be able to produce high quality images.